Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you here in Overall Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, Our Realm Reborn. It is year two, day 69 for EDSS in the Realm Reborn. And last time, we completed the last of the three parts of the Crystal Tower, a world all to itself, the Crystal Tower's World of Darkness, where we defeated the Cloud of Darkness, and after having done so, we said goodbye to Grahatia, who was given the charge to seal off the Crystal Tower's access point. But, because it's been sealed off, doesn't mean we can't go back there, or to any of the three Crystal Tower parts for that matter. Because at the end of yesterday's two-second video, because the video was so huge, I had to put it separated into two parts. Yeah, it was just that big. But yeah, yesterday I mentioned that you could get access to a new challenge that would allow you to do the three parts of the Crystal Tower and get something special out of it. Well, I couldn't remember where you had to start that point. But then, after a little bit of trying to remember, I remembered where I was supposed to go. So before we start on the main story of Patch 2.5, let's go over and speak with Sayel to take on her challenge entitled, But I Hardly Noah. Sayel looks as though she has lost someone. Adventure, may I ask a favor of you? I am sorry to trouble you so soon after your trials in the Crystal Tower, but my colleague Ko Rabenthal has gone missing. She discovered the oddest deep within orb deep within the tower and said she was returning here to analyze it. No one has seen her since, though she is too timid a girl to have run off with her find. She probably left to gather some artifacts of materials and revenants tool for her studies. But all the same, can you go and look for her there? I cannot shake the feeling something has befallen her. Yeah, I mentioned this person also at the end of yesterday's recording. Um, this particular person actually will give us the opportunity to get us the access point to doing those challenges again, but in a way that will benefit us. So, let's make our way back into Revenant's Toll. And yeah, it still takes a long time to actually show up there. <laughs> it's, it's just because it's so big and so many people will take up residence here. It's crazy. But yeah, here is going to be the person of interest right over here. Here's Ko. And once you know it, talking with another dragoon. This is a sister, isn't it? Yeah, you can tell it's a sister because of the belly. <laughs> She's got an open belly, so yeah. Let's go ahead and speak with Ko. Is there something I can help you with? Actually, there is. You seek Ko Rabenta? Well, you have found the right body, but she's not at home, so to speak. This lovely girl you see before you is known as Ko, but another soul dwells within her at present. Mine, to be precise. Yeah, and this poor girl's become possessed. You are speaking with none other than Noah, Archmagus of Alag. My scholarly works are legend, my treatises of the cosmos priceless, and my very name known throughout the world. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're THE Noah? Or twas so once. My soul has wild away the millennia within an orb. Co awake woke me from my slumber and, well, how can I pass up a chance to walk the world again? So I allowed my spirit to flow into her body and so here we are. Well, forgive me, but you do not seem overly bewildered by this. Would I be wrong to assume you belong to the scholarly fellowship that carries my name? Uh, in a manner of speaking. As I thought, Ko revealed this Noah when I entered her mind. Oh, but do be at ease, I burn you no ill will for using my name. I am, however, intrigued. What discoveries has this organization made? Has it made any findings in the to begin with? Act in my name, and so are as disciples to me. I will give you my blessing after you have proven your intellectual worth. Such is my wont. So, are you deserving? Well, we're trying to explain ourselves. But, yeah, it doesn't seem to have completely convinced her. Or in this case, him. You have dedicated to yourself to creating a brighter future, eh? Then we may be alike in spirit. When I lived, I had a thirst for knowledge and dedicated myself to understanding the world. Twas how I became an Archmagus. And now? You may yet become a disciple of mine. 
I would learn more of your journey into the Crystal Tower. If I can see your dedication amongst your exploits, I would be happy to give you a token of my immense wisdom. Pray do not expect too much, though. There are limits to what I can do in this body. Those whose, whose owner you are seeking, of course. Well, I will make sure that Ko's friend learns of what has happened. Some version, at least. And worry not, this body is in safe hands. And I believe that is the shape of it. If my offer has tantalized you and you wish to prove yourself in my eyes, you certainly know where to find me. And so that completes the challenge. So yeah, as I mentioned at the end of the previous episode, what this now does is it unlocks a new challenge for you when you speak with Ko. When you want to speak to her, now she has this little unique symbol that you can speak to her with. And you can take on her challenge entitled Gift of the Archmages. What this allows you to do is take on the Labyrinth of the Ancients, Circus Tower, as well as World of Darkness again. And this time, once you complete all three, you can then not only get an Allegan Catalyst, but you can also get one of three different items that you see here. In the Carbon Coat, the Carbon Twine, or the Encrypted Tombstone, one of the three, and she will give you this item. And, in addition to that, you can go use it over in the North Shroud with Geralt and his apprentice Drake to get your gear enhanced if it is a level 120 and you purchased it here in Mordona. So, with all that taken care of, yeah, we, I can do this off screen another time, but for now, we have work to do, as in getting to the main story of Patch 2.5. So, let me say we get on top of that right now. Yeah, because I think we've left the Scions of the Seventh Dawn waiting long enough for us to give an explanation on things. So, here we go. Back to where we ended the last episode. And now, it's time to get back down to real business. So, let's go ahead and speak with the lovely Lady Mephilia to get the Patch 2.5 main storyline underway. Starting with a challenge entitled, Good Intentions. Minfilia is considering which of her many responsibilities demands her utmost attention. I am most eager to address the Arsene threat. However, we dare not neglect our other pressing concerns. We both know full well that Saint Shiva will not be the last primal we face, and our relationship with Istishgard is still tenuous at best. To think that the resolution of the primal threat was once the sole priority of the signs of the Seventh Dawn. Some days I wonder if it was wise for us to take on so many other responsibilities. Well, that was our choice. Yeah, lest you forget and see it, the Scions need not shoulder the burden alone. Were not the Crystal Braves established for this very reason? True, we are presented with a multitude of problems. However, we have all the resources we need to address them in turn. Yeah, that's something I needed to change. That's something that I was discovering in patch 2.4 when I was doing the main storyline. Like, when did I turn Alpha Node into a New England socialite with my accent? Like, yeah, that definitely sounded like a New England socialite, no question. Edie, in particular, is ever a sitting hand who I will trust will continue to support the Braves. Of course, there are Node. To what do we owe the pleasure? Have there been further developments regarding the situation in Noldor? As expected, the Immortal Flames have been struggling to cope with the revelation that one of their highest ranking officers was the Garlean agent. Suffice it to say, Teleji Adeleji and his monotourist ilk have wasted no time in attempting to turn the situation to their advantage. Coupled with ongoing unrest, the flames are finding themselves hard-pressed. Plainly, General Albon needs our help, and I will direct the Crystal Braves to offer what support they can. If I am to stay abreast of the latest developments, and issue effective orders, however, I cannot afford to waste time travelling back and forth. And so, for the foreseeable future, I think it would be best if I were to remain in Old R. Unless you have an objection? None whatsoever. We have matters here well in hand. For now. Monbreda's research is proceeding as planned. So she tells me, though I am not familiar with the details. 
Uri Anger is poring over his tomes at the Waking Sands and the others are contributing in their own ways. Alas, the key problem, how to form an ethereal blade at will, remains unsolved. Nevertheless, it is only a matter of time. Well, let's hope you're right on that. Edie, while we focus on that task, mayhap you could assist Alphanode with his braves and his braves with theirs? I believe I can. It would do much to restore faith in the immortal flames if the warrior of light was seen working on their behalf. Never forget that your esteemed status allows you to act in ways that those more tightly bound to organizations and nations cannot. As ever, I implore you to do so. You'll get no objection from me. Not that your response was ever in doubt, but I humbly thank you once more for aiding our cause. Now then, there are preparations I must attend to before my departure, such as receiving Riol's latest report. He has proven to be quite skilled at gathering information others wish kept a secret, hence why I placed him under my direct command and ordered him to investigate the Uldan riots. When you are finished here, join me outside. Depending on what he has to say, I may soon have a favor to ask. If there are any developments on our front, I shall inform you at once in the usual fashion, via Link Shell. And so off goes Alpha Node. And so must we. So, first challenge of the main story of patch 2.5 is underway. So it looks like we will be speaking with Riol. We did pass by him as we were coming back into the Rising Stones here. So let's see what our man, formerly of the Company of Heroes, has to say. Arriving on scene. Pleasure as always, Edie. You'll be escorting the commander to Uldal, I take it. Actually, I had another task in mind for him. If you would be so kind as to repeat your report for his benefit, you know, would help if I'm not going in blind. Me and Mon have taken inquiry, making inquiries into the source of the weapons, what they found their ways into refugee hands way back. So happens, we caught wind of something promising. A rather large purchase of p sharp and pointy things by a black marketeer holed up near Highbridge. That's in eastern Thanlan. I doubt that this man would have secured such a quantity of weapons if he did not already have clients waiting. Clients that, for whatever reason, would prefer for this transaction to remain secret. Brings to mind that merchant what caught an arrow while talking to Edie, don't it? Generous fellow he was, donning out swords and spears to the downtrodden and disgruntled. Which isn't to say that these clients have the same mischief in mind, but if you want to be sure, might be prudent to intervene before they collect their goods, savvy? Seizing the weapons before they fall into the wrong hands would be the best. However, if we strike at the appointed hour, we might capture the Black Marketeer as well as his clients. What say you, Edie? Seems like a good idea. Then it is settled. Rendezvous with Captain Ilbert at Highbridge, and intervene when the exchange takes place. Now then, if you would excuse me, I must leave for Uldar. I expect good tidings. Let's hope for all of our sake you do get them. And so for our sake you do get the good tidings you were looking for. So... Off to Eastern Thanlan. Yeah, it's been a while since we've set foot in Eastern Thanlan. As far as a main story plot is concerned, of course, it was in Eastern Thanlan itself that we had our first primal duel in the game when we locked horns with the Freet. Now we come here for a much more important purpose now that the primals are defeated. Because, yeah, if there's still unrest going on in Ulda and in its territory, Thelen, we have to know about it. So, heading off to the east towards Highbridge. In fact, Highbridge actually does play some other prominent roles here in the challenges that you can find here. If you're playing as a gladiator or a thaumaturge, the, their level 30 challenges take place here at Highbridge. And so... It's something to take into consideration while you're going about. So, off to the bridge itself. And there's Ilbert, along with a fellow Crystal Brave, so let's go ahead and talk to our good man. Oh, Edie, my scouts have been keeping a close eye on the Black Marketeer, 
and it would seem that his guests have arrived. It would also seem that he has hired more than a few men to stand guard. Common thugs of no consequence, but they nevertheless pose a threat. Even so, I feel compelled to apologize. This is far beneath a man of your standing, and Commander Levier needn't have dispatched you hither. You don't believe I'm not good enough? But powerful men have ever need of loyal, able-bodied friends. Having one found in you, it is only natural that he would come to rely upon you without hesitation. Well, at least you understand where he's coming from. So, let's take on the next challenge entitled, Bait and Switch. Ilbert is eager to bring the Black Marketeer and his clients to justice. Now then, we should make for the Burning Wall without delay, and secure those weapons. The first unit will ensure that the clients do not escape. With me, Edie. And so, off he runs. And I get flipped off. <laughs> yeah. You flip me off while I'm not looking. Thanks. So, Burning Wall is actually this corner of the Eastern Thanlin map. It's a nice little labyrinth. And actually quite a cool one, too. I'll show off why as we approach. Yeah, no main story plot goes on in the Burning Wall in Year One, but it does here. And when we arrive there, we get a really awesome place to go to. In fact, I can't remember if we've actually done anything in this area at all prior to me going into it. So we should be finding the tunnel to get in right here. Yeah, so it's this tunnel past the waterfall. And as you can see, we're going to start seeing glowing crystals. Actually, you know what? I think we have been here before. I think when we were getting ready to go to the Siren, um, among the various things we had to do was search for corrupted crystals, and this place abounds in them. As you can see, they're just all... Let me go to first-person perspective. You can see they're just all over the place. Towering up into the heavens. It's pretty impressive. Impressive, pretty intense, too. Anyway, we're not gonna deal with the fate here. We're gonna just speak with Captain Obaird. I spy the one man, but there are sure to be others. I have a plan. While you approach this entry and create a distraction, my men and I will slip past and catch the Black Marketeer unawares. Once you've disposed of the thugs, wait for us outside the tunnel entrance. Any questions? Then let us be off. Good luck, my friend. So we gotta get down there now. And I'm just trying to remember how exactly I do it. I think it's this way. Yep, here you are. Hired thug, huh? Yeah. And looks like he's armed to the teeth, he wants to take us on. So, let's go ahead and oblige him. Bring on my chocobo, and then let's dance. Who goes there? An adventurer? Damn fool, you should have never come here. And so, dual time against not one but two Black Marketeer bodyguards. Into the air, three times over, one bodyguard down. Now for his friend. Yeah, so far all you've done is just stand there. And thus, you paid the price for just standing still. Oh, and now here comes another one. I don't know what you're gonna do, little Lalafell, but it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna beat me. You're not gonna beat the Warrior of Light. Ah, more of a challenge. Ah, switching it up a bit, I see. And then let's take it to you and strike you down. Yeah, that was the head. And so... Alright, thug, where'd you run off to? Where did you go? Okay, you went further west. We won't get attacked by the Golden Fleeces because they're not feral. Should be able to find a way around over here. And get to our target. Is it, is it gonna be down there waiting for us? Yeah, okay, yeah, down there. Amongst these corrupted crystals. Okay. Well then. Let's have a look around and see what happens.
Biding time, sitting around, waiting on our Crystal Braves. I don't understand! What's all this about? Ooh. Yeah, something's going on over there. Perhaps we need to take a look at what exactly happened. Let's figure out what went down. Hey, Albert. Find what you were looking for? Uh, did you find someone dead, it looks like? As you can see, this is a fine mess. When I tried to restrain him, he drew a blade and lashed out. But before I could disarm him, one of my subordinates panicked and this is the result. Oh, really? How foolish of me to underestimate the bastard and to bring an inexperienced recruit. Commander Leveilleur will be most disappointed. Damn it, all a golden opportunity wasted! As for the clients, though we not know how they slipped past our perimeter, at present, the first is currently tracking a party of dusk white cell swords we suspect may be them. What with that, we could have enlisted the aid of the immortal flames or the brass blades. Alas, we're here to aid them, they're in no position to aid us. Well, at the very least, we have secured the weapons, yet even that accomplishment is lacking, for the information we received indicated a massive shipment, and this is anything but. Oh, yeah. This definitely proved to be a not-so-fruitful challenge. More was lost than gained. Hopefully the next challenge can give us some redemption. So let's speak with Ilbert to take on the next challenge entitled Best Laid Schemes. Ilbert would like nothing more than to have this incident forgotten. I will join the first in their hunt for the Dust White Cell Swords. If the gods are good, we will catch them before they escape into the Black Shroud. Yeah, because the Black Shroud, of course, shares a border with Thanalan. In the meantime, I ask that you deliver these weapons to Uldar in my stead. Entrust them to the third's Yu Yu Hase. He will take care of the rest. Alright, then let's go ahead and take this crate with us. We'll go ahead and mount it on the back of my chocobo, even though you can't actually see it. Alright, so, off to Uldar then. Get ourselves out of here and hopefully we can bring some something that they were looking for obviously but obviously we need more than this we need to do better than what we just did all right so it looks like our man is not going to be over on this side let's see if he is anywhere over near the marketplace because considering we're dealing with the black markets here there is no question in my mind that we could very well find Yu Yu Hase. Well, he's actually not quite where we expected him to be, but we can make our way over to him. So it looks like he's going to be around this bend, I think. Yeah, here's Yu Yu Hase along with Roed and Alian. Ah, the warrior of light! Ever reliable friend to the Crystal Braves! You have my deepest thanks for your assistance in Kerthus. Now, what brings you to us this day? Well, it'll be this. A gift of weapons from a certain black marketeer, courtesy of Captain Ilbert, you say? Understood. Once you've catalogued the contents, I'll have them delivered to the Hall of Flames. This cannot be everything, can it? Rion stated with confidence that there will be a far greater quantity of weapons. A blatant falsehood. Clearly Rion is unfamiliar with the ways of all our merchants, who ever strive to present themselves as greater than they are. We should be thankful that its information was not completely erroneous, and that we managed to achieve anything of worth at all. Is it still something worth celebrating, isn't it? It's still worth something worth some, something worth celebrating, isn't it, Lieutenant? Besides, we've got more important things to worry about, like fighting those Gaulians up north. There'll be no fighting if I have anything to say about it. Our orders are to stand watch, not to see glory in battle. If you have no further need of us, then I shall take my unit to, to the Cerulean Processing Plant. Time for the fourth to earn their keep, eh? Fight well, Alian, for the freedom of all! <laughs> Indeed. 
Yeah, we all flip each other off because we can. And so, excellent work as always, my friend. Rest assured that the Immortal Flames will hear of your contribution. Until we meet again! Enzo, after getting flipped off by Yu Yu Hase. Oh, hey there, real. Edie, a word if it pleasey. Not here. Look for me at the Sapphire Avenue Exchange. No need for whistling this time, don't you worry. Looks like we are going to the market after all. Maybe he has a lead that we only are now just learning about. Let's go and see if it yields any fruit for us. Yeah, it's a shame that they don't have a an Ethernet area right at the market and that you have to run from a place like the Weaver's Guild in order to get the closest access to it. Alright, where are you, Riol? Thanks for indulging me request. Few places better than a market for privacy, I find. All the hustle and bustle of commerce means most conversations go unnoticed. I'll get to the point. At the burning wall, when you and the captain interrupted the exchange, what happened? Tell me everything. Leave no detail out. Alright, well, this is how it went down. That's not quite how the first told it. Uh-oh. These dust boys that we're chasing... Last wo latest word is that we lost the trail. But you never saw me yourself? Not before the fucking started and not after? Something ain't right. I don't know what it is, but I can feel it in me bones. I'm not daft enough to be misled by some merchant's drunken boasts. All information was reliable, damn it. I know he purchased these weapons. As if I've never deciphered a moneylender's books or had to follow a transaction back to its source. Did plenty of that back when the Braves were getting sorted, believe me. The commander wanted assurances that we weren't taking guilt from the wrong sort of benefactors. Of course, these days the money flows like water and the first and the third get the shiniest new toys. Forgive me, friend. I have a lot on my mind these days and I appreciate you lending the air. Right then, let's get back to it. Is there a bribery going on in the Braves? Edie, can you hear me? This is the Taru! Your presence is urgently requested at the Rising Stones. Please come and see me as soon as you are able! Alright, then I guess we know where we go next. We complete the challenge back in Mordona, so see you at the Rising Stones in a moment. And so, now having returned to the Rising Stones, let's go ahead and speak with the Taru to complete this challenge. Thank you for coming so quickly, Edie. We've a guest from Ishgard who wishes to speak with you. A most, um, determined lady by all indications. I really hope it's Lucia. Well, we'll know next time because we're coming up towards half an hour here, so I figure it's best to bring today's proceedings to a close and we'll see if this is who I think it is next time. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV on Realm Reborn. And when I join you again, we will see exactly who Tataru wants us to speak with, and what information they may have awaiting us. So until next time everyone, this is Matthew at Novora Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.